Hello gardeners, welcome to Dawson's and uh, it's midwinter, it's a little bit chilly outside um, and I'm not really that tough, I have got a merino shirt, shirt under here but I thought what we'd do today is have a look at some of the, uh, the best of our fruit trees in our winter uh, fruit tree catalogue, all in store now and ready for planting now. And some of our most popular uh, fruit trees for modern uh, small home gardens are our dwarf and compact apple range and uh, some of the very best, well one of the best I think is uh, Pinkerbell, which uh, Pinkerbell is quite a special apple. It uh, uh, came from Western Australia originally, and basically what it is is a is a dwarf form of the famous Pink Lady apple, which is of course one of Western Australia's great horticultural export expert exports. Uh, the uh, Pinkerbell uh, apple is a is a great one for modern gardens because it, it's quite compact. It only grows to about two meters high as its maximum height, and it's a, it grows to about a meter, meter and a half wide. And you can actually see behind me in this uh, tub um, a fairly mature example of Pinkerbell. And you can see it's got this fairly um, you know, upright you know, column type shape, um, very upright branches. And you can see all the lovely fruit spurs on here. And this, this tree here is probably about 8 to 10 years old. And this is you know, sort of the mature height you can sort of look forward to you in your own garden. So around 2 metres. Uh, now apples are an example of a fruit tree that does require pollination. And uh, with uh, Pinkerbell, probably the best pollinate, pollinator you can use is uh, this uh, dwarf uh, fruit tree called Leprechaun. And uh, Leprechaun is basically a dwarf form of the very famous Granny Smith apple. And uh, those two, that, that pair of uh, Pinkerbell and uh, Leprechaun is really a match uh, made in heaven. They really uh, pollinate, pollinate each other beautifully and you, you can look forward to uh, lots and lots of apples so you'll have a lovely green apple in the the uh, granny smith style uh, leprechaun and your beautiful pink pink skinned apples of the uh, the pink lady so these are terrific apples you can grow them in a, a large uh, tub or something like a wine barrel you can keep them in permanently and they're also great for sort of planting in narrow spots along the fence if you want to have a uh, you know a, a perhaps a fruiting um you know fence line or a hedge you could plant them probably about um as close as about two metres apart or even a bit closer and uh, you know they're, re they're really good I think these apples will fit into virtually any size garden. Well, one of the, uh, the first fruit trees to come into blossom each season is, is of course the almonds and they're, to me I think they're really worth growing for their ornamental uh, uses apart from the um, you know the fruit or in this, this case it's a, the, the almond nut that you get from them. Uh, because they start flowering sometimes, you know, it's sort of uh, late August or even a bit earlier and uh, with that beautiful sort of blossom when it's still quite dark and a little bit dreary outside and they really are one of the heralds of spring and they're just, you know, a really beautiful uh, small tree uh, that again fits into a lot of uh, modern uh, style gardens. Um, this one is a, again another, uh, quite a special one, it is a, um, a dwarf self-pollinating almond. So this only grows to about one and a half metres to two metres high, you know, about a metre and a half wide would be its uh, maximum um, width and again this is going to fit into a pot beautifully or you could use it as a almost a large shrub in the garden and uh, because it's so small it's much easier to net and protect those uh, almonds from the parrots which really do love almonds just as much as we do and if you're looking for something a little bit uh, larger in terms of almonds I couldn't recommend more um, this is uh, our other new seasons almond we've got in stock this is uh, the all-in-one almond which again is another self-pollinating almond so these you only need one tree to get um, almonds off them and the self-pollinating almond while it isn't a true dwarf uh, almond it is quite a slow growing and you know in my experience a very compact tree it really only grows to about two and a half three meters and so again it can be very useful um, not just as a fruit tree I think sometimes it helps to think outside the square a bit and this is a tree that you could use in you know any small courtyard garden or again in a large container and it, it's quite ornamental because you've got that, that lovely blossom um, they're a Mediterranean tree they do very well in our climate uh, you know bees love them and uh, yeah self pollinating almonds well, these are, this is one of my favourite fruit trees of all uh, of course it's the uh, pomegranate and I just love them because I think they really are one of the best fruit trees for Perth because they're just so bulletproof you know they, they just uh, you know if you say you're not a great gardener you can't grow fruit trees well I'm sure you're gonna have su su success with a uh, with a pomegranate uh, they really thrive in Perth's uh, Mediterranean climate 
and uh, they, they're just super tough. And apart from that, they're such a such a, a beautiful uh, tree. They grow to around three meters high. Uh, you can clip them into a single trunk form if you like, but they tend to grow more naturally in this sort of a multi sort of a stemmed uh, sort of format. Uh, and you know they're really quite useful uh, as a a small tree, large shrub, or even used ornamentally in the garden as well. But they are one of the healthiest fruits you can grow. Uh, pomegranate's fruit is uh, so full of healthy antioxidants. They've sort of been reborn as a bit of a superfood, if you like. And they can, the fruit themselves are so exotic looking and uh, they're just so useful with the, uh, the, the delicious sort of fruit sacks inside that you can use in uh, salads and garnishing all sorts of dishes and you can also juice them and make really healthy juice which is really good for you so um, the fruits so ornamental they, they remind me of the Arabian Nights you know, very exotic uh, beautiful trees so um, yeah look if you want a bulletproof fruit tree you really can't go past uh, a pomegranate and this is uh, one it's actually a Spanish variety we've got in stock it's called Mola de Aliche um, and Aliche is a town in uh, Valencia in Spain where this variety hails from. So um, give it a go, grow a pom pomegranate. Now every now and then something quite new and different comes along in terms of uh, fruit trees and, and this is uh, quite an exciting, uh, relatively new fruit tree I think. It's called um, Spicy and it is basically a nectarine uh, plum cross which is really very interesting and um, this this tree really has a number of strings to its bow um, obviously being a uh, nectarine plum cross the fruit is quite interesting you get this sort of lovely um, you know red blushed uh, skin and the fruit inside the texture is as you'd expect from a nectarine but it's got quite a interesting um, tart uh, plum aftertaste so it's a really interesting fruit to grow you're probably not going to find this in the shops it's something you'll have to grow and enjoy at home um, but the other interesting fruit thing about this uh, fruit tree spicy is that um, the foliage is very ornamental for a fruit tree especially in spring when the, the new foliage comes out it's got a really lovely strong uh, red burgundy color to the foliage making it you know a really ornamental tree to have in the garden as well as being a a beautiful fruit tree so it grows to about uh, three meters uh, high and wide would be its ultimate height in the garden and um, you know that's a good size to try and keep you, your fruit trees okay well I'm a bit of an olive nut I just love the things and uh, they're also just such a wonderful tough fruit tree for Perth and, and most of Western Australia for that matter uh, olives are basically pretty much indestructible in the garden. They're just so tough, uh, a true Mediterranean plant, and they just they just love our magnificent Mediterranean climate in Perth. And uh, now's a great time to get them in. Uh, a lot of people are interested in pickling varieties, obviously, to make your own pickled olives at home, which isn't hard to do. And uh, we've got a great range of uh, famous pickling varieties in store now. And of course, probably none better than the famous uh, Kalamata, of course, a Greek uh, olive. Uh, traditionally used for um, you know uh, black pickled olives so it's uh, picked when it's fully mature you know about um, uh, late April May and used for pickling. Um, Kalamata is quite an interesting tree it has sort of you know really large sort of uh, silvery green foliage the leaves are actually a lot bigger than most other olives but uh, it is a very famous olive and uh, you know if, you, if you're really interested in uh, pickling olives um, Kalamata is probably one of the finest varieties you can use. Some of the best of the dwarf fruit trees are the Trixie range of dwarf's uh, stone fruit. And these include uh, this fellow here, which is uh, the, uh, the pixie dwarf or miniature peach. And uh, this is a, a really amazing uh, little peach. It is a true dwarf. It only grows to a maximum of about one and a half metres high and wide. And it's got a lovely sort of, uh, you know, goblet shaped uh, uh, habit, which you can see behind me here. This is a, uh, a pixie peach here. So this one's probably been in the uh, the raised bed here for a couple of years. Uh, it's probably about I don't know, sort of 1.2 metres high now and about the same width and you can see lovely sort of compact rounded shape and we did have quite a good amount of fruit off this uh, in uh, January just past. So it, it sort of, the fruit matures about uh, you know, late February uh, late January to early February each year. Um, you know, lovely sort of, uh, you know, red blushed uh, delicious peaches uh, they're um, freestone uh, fruit, which is lovely for eating. So these are these are fantastic. Some of the, the best uh, dwarf uh, peaches you can grow, and just fantastic in large containers, uh, small gardens, and tubs. 
So behind me here we have another one of these uh, Trixie Dwarf stone fruit uh, trees and this is uh, Nectarze which is a, a dwarf uh, nectarine. So the same as the uh, dwarf uh, peach, this one is pretty mature now uh, and it can grow to a maximum again of about one and a half metres high and wide and you know lovely shape, it's uh, you know still dropping its leaves, we're still sort of only in uh, early July. Uh, but this is uh, Nectarze, so again one of the best uh, dwarf fruit trees you can grow. And just a tip on all your fruit trees at this time of year in Perth, because we don't experience a really cold winter, once we get to sort of late June, early July, with all your fruit trees, if they haven't dropped their leaves, and often they won't because our, our winter's not particularly cold, it's a good idea to uh, just go through and just, um, you know, just defoliate them if you can. Just be careful you're not ripping the buds off, but um, just, just pull all the old leaves off. And, that does a couple of things. It's it's good for the uh, the health of the tree, um, reducing some disease, but also it forces the tree into a dormancy and really helps them to start accumulate those chill hours that they need to flower and fruit effectively. So, just a little tip: um, you know, defoliate your trees once we get to you know late June, uh, early July. Really does your fruit trees a world of good. Okay, so there we go. We hope you. We hope you've tempted you with some uh, delicious fruits to grow at home from our amazing uh, winter fruit tree catalogue which you can pick up your own free copy at all Dawson stores or this is available of course for viewing online at our website which is www.dawsons.com.au so um, get, get into fruit trees, it's a fantastic thing to do particularly for families and uh, kids um, so remember you know plant it, grow it, eat it, get into fruit trees. <laughs>